Ladies and gentlemen of the Shrek Gaming Twitter.com video, a lot's happened today actually in the tech industry and so we're going to split today's news over a couple of videos. This one is going to start out with ARM where they are being rather boastful about the performance of mobile graphics processors, obviously primarily developed by themselves and are basically insisting that by the time 2017, late 2017 rolls around, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One will have met its match thanks to their mobile processors. We'll get into that in just a second and then we're going to finish off this video with news on Vulcan because a lot of you have messaged me asking me about my opinions of it and I will give a brief synopsis in this video news on what's happening who's involved that type of thing but for the in-depth analysis I want to put that out over this weekend or possibly next weekend depending on some reviews and some other stuff we're doing in the back end because frankly I feel that it would be doing a disservice to the API and in as a whole plus as well as some other technology that I've been meaning to cover but we're just trying to get some stuff kind of solidified shall we say we're getting some new equipment in some filming equipment and some lighting and it's just being a bit of a whole thing so I want to wait until we've got that first because otherwise I feel like I'm not really doing it as effectively as it could be anyway I've waxed lyrically about this let's move on to the whole boastfulness of ARM so I don't think I need to really introduce who ARM are they're one of the biggest powerhouses not just processor development not just one of the biggest processor developers in the world manufacturers in the world but they are of course a powerhouse in the industry now um, the company director was recently giving a conference which is known as the casual connect conference ccc if you prefer over amsterdam and he's a company director and he's been working with nvidia samsung and Te and uh, texas instruments and his, the company's director's name i just realized i haven't given it is nizir romdan hopefully i've pronounced that correctly and he believes that as i said by the end of 2017 we're going to hit the milestone of being able to equal the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One in terms of performance and he says and I quote mobile hardware is already powerful if you take today's high-end smartphones or tablets the performance is already better than Xbox 360 and PlayStation 4 and it's catching up quickly with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One now one of the big things, of course, is virtual reality. It's everywhere. Everyone and their bloody mother is talking about virtual reality. And I've actually heard some interesting um, statistics from developers. Some, A lot of them, a percentage, I don't remember what the percentage is. It was over 60% in some of the polls that I've seen. They don't believe it's going to be the next big thing. However, they believe it's going to have specific usage cases, which I definitely would uh, concur with. However... He went on to say that our view is that mobile VR is the use case that could unlock the full potential of mobile for hardcore gamers. For once, mobile devices are on core with PC and consoles in terms of the experience. We won't have the same processing power, and battery life is a problem, but it is the same user experience, and that could be a game changer for mobile gaming. Now, that's certainly true, because ultimately a lot of the headsets that we're seeing essentially are using recycled smartphone screens there are a few differences here and there for example some of the stuff that nvidia have been pushing but for all intents and purposes the screens are basically super powerful um high-end smartphone screens which is obviously one of the reasons which has benefited smartphone usage and adoption as well so i can see how that could potentially be that you simply stick your phone into the visor so to speak not quite sure if I would go as to say that it's an on par experience if it was my personal opinion because my personal opinion is that you've still got the control issue I guess one could argue however with let's say a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or you know connected via a piece of string to the phone controller technically I mean you can actually pair especially if your Android device is unlocked you can even pair a DS4 a DualShock 4 or a DualShock 3 to the device however typically the device unless something's changed over the last few months it does need to be rooted unfortunately but I'm digressing somewhat what about their primary claim what about the claim that the performance of the hardware can actually beat that 
of the PlayStation 4 in essentially around 18 months. I am obviously slightly changing the timelines, but essentially around 18, 19 months time. Well, Moore's Law may be slightly dead, but there are a couple of things that certainly go hand in hand with making sure that their prediction is somewhat accurate. Now, one of those is the fact that the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One's CPUs, we're going to actually dissect these into different sections. The CPU side of things does have quite high overhead, and essentially the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One's CPUs are not super high-end. That's one of the reasons that developers are A, shifting to a lot of compute work, and B, they're starting to shift towards parallelism. In other words, pushing things over the multiple cores that the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One have. As you're probably aware, they have six cores as standard. However, if developers opt not to use certain functionality of their game, for example, with the Xbox One, they opt not to use some voice commands, some of the seventh core is unlocked. How much is available does depend on the operating system. So at least and unless things have changed over the past several months since the dev kit was leaked, you don't actually have a fixed percentage of the seventh core because sometimes the operating system does need to take away some of that seventh core. So in essential, essentially that core keeps upping and going up and down. However, it's fair to say that the processors of the latest console, um, I'm sorry, of the la latest smartphones are starting to become more and more powerful. By this point, the consoles will definitely still have the memory bandwidth advantage because obviously they're, let's say for the PS4, it will be using GDDR5 compared to LPDDR4, um, which obviously a lot of the smartphones and tablet devices are using. But the biggie, the one that most people are concerned about are the GPUs. Now, there are a number of high-end GPUs already available on smart devices. Um, one of the big ones are, of course, manufactured by Power VR, And they are currently the GT7900 uh, range. And they debuted or news started to pop up about the late February last year. Now... Those, in terms of number of, or rather actual physical performance of the amount of G flops, there are several of them. The 7600 has six clusters, which puts out about 172 G flops. You've got the 7800 Plus, which is around 345 G flops. And then you've got the 7800. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I screwed up. Let me let me start again. The 7800 has 332 G flops. The 7800 Plus has 345 G flops. And then, assuming you can run the GT7900 with 16 clusters at 800 megahertz, you get around 819 G flops of performance which is an awful lot, however it's still far shy of the 1.84 or so um, teraflops, remember 1000 G flops make a teraflop of the PlayStation 4's GPU, and there are a couple of other caveats as well. One of them is essentially power, in other words running a GPU eats up energy, so Unless you want your battery life to be 15 seconds, you have to bear that in mind. But, it is fair to say that the performance of uh, mobile hardware is definitely starting to come a lot faster than what we had anticipated. I mean, for example, on the GPU side of mobile, you can get Maxwell cores at times 256, um, which is on a 20NM, this is a Tegra X1, and that puts out around 512 G flops. Now, there are a lot of other components. It's very, very, very important to remember there are a lot of other components which go into producing a graphics card, or actually the graphics card producing images on screen. Some of them are draw calls, for example, how many commands the CPU can issue and there have actually been some problems with that in the past and developers have actually complained regarding the the actual implementation of the APIs on mobile. Vulkan, which we'll get into later, is certainly going to move 
to somewhat towards fixing this, and Vulcan, by the way, is heavily supported by Apple. They're actually one of the front runners of that, as well as some of the producers of the GPUs that we're referring to, for example, NVIDIA. And now, other cards, for the sake of argument, let's have a look at, I'm just scrolling through a whole list of them. The Adreno 530, that's also around 588. So, is it possible? Will we see the performance in 2017? In some ways, yes, but in others, no. Will it have the same number of texture mapping units? Will it have the same number of ROPs? Will it be able to sustain that? Will the programmers actually be comfortable with it? And so on and so forth. Well, potentially, but let's face it, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One were released at around the 300 mark. Obviously, I'm rounding up, and it does depend on your country, but they were released in 2013 for around 300 Great British Pounds. On the other hand, we're looking at a device which is potentially going to be entering 2018, which is, let's say, four or five years, depending on if it's 17, 18, and it's going to probably cost around 600 bucks. So, yeah. I'm not really surprised that we're going to start seeing mobile technology catch up, to be honest with you. It's just how things go. So, will we? We probably won't see games which are going to rival those experiences you're going to get from, let's say, Naughty Dog. Let's say you're probably not going to see Uncharted 4 capable of running on the mobile for the next several years. However, in certain usage cases, I imagine in certain benchmarks, we certainly will start to see these mobile chips start to become more and more powerful. This is particularly true as we start to further and further and further reduce the power consumption of those chips, which, as I said, Vulcan and other APIs are certainly going to benefit with. Now, speaking of Vulcan, you see how that segue worked? It was smooth, right? Let's talk about Vulcan. So, stop me if this sounds familiar. Essentially, Vulcan is a new low-level API which aims to provide better performance for developers to improve the aesthetics of games, improve the running of games, and generally just make games look better. That may sound very familiar and you could probably substitute much of what I just said with DirectX 12 and you would be none the poorer for sentence structure. However, there are some caveats. Vulcan is supported by far more than just Microsoft. Vulcan is supported by everyone from Sony all the way to Google, to the folks who produce Linux, and I say folks because let's face it, it's large conglomerates of different individuals who put together the Linux specifications, all the way down to developers. Yes, a lot of developers are supporting it. And then, of course, the hardware manufacturers as well. And in fact, even AMD, um, they're actually using uh, their Mantle API is now split into two different offshoots. So you've got the Vulkan, which we all know, as I just mentioned, and then Mantle, which is now going to be used in-house for Liquid VR and other such usage cases. What does all of that mean? Well, it means that it's going to access a lot of extra performance. It means that rather than essentially poor implementation, with, you know, previous APIs where it, they were kind of cobbled together. I mean, look how old, I mean, seriously, just look how old OpenGL is. And mobile offshoots of OpenGL are ancient. And the code is just inefficient. This is what I was saying earlier about Apple were just unhappy. Apple and a lot of, and even uh, Google, they're saying, you know what, we're actually encouraging our developers now to push the latest API because it's just better. And there are already beta drivers available for the Vulkan API 1.0 from NVIDIA and from AMD. Now, Gabe Newell has actually said, and I quote, we're extremely pleased the industry's rapid execution of the Vulkan API initiative. Due to the Vulkan's cross-platform availability, high performance, and healthy open source ecosystem, we expect to see a rapid uptake by software developers, far exceeding the adoption of similar APIs. I'm pretty sure it just... Uh, Vulcan punched. You see what I did there? Oh god, I need to stop. Far exceeding, exceeding the adoption of similar APIs which are limited to specific operating system. That is definitely a punch in the face to, uh, to Microsoft. Um, 
Raja Kadori from AMD, who of course heads up the RTG group, says, and I quote, the release of Vulkan 1.0 specification is a huge step forward for developers. Um, and it's, obviously he pushes the fact that it was a drive from Mantle. And then obviously says it's the low overhead, high performance graphics API to benefit cross platform. And the promotion of scalable technologies continues to be the focus at AMD as a pioneer of the low overhead API space. Can't actually fault him at that. To be fair, it would be arguable that we would not see DirectX 12 or Vulkan or a lot of these APIs at least this far along in development without AMD. Uh, as a member of the Kronos Group, AMD is proud to collaborate with hardware and software industry leaders to develop the Vulkan API to ignite the next evolution in PC game development. And Tony Tomasi from NVIDIA said, and I quote, The Vulkan API enables developers to get the most the best out of NVIDIA GPUs and we are proud in our role in the development. We are making Vulkan drivers available for Windows, Linux and Android on the same day of the specification launch and we continue to work with Kronos to ensure Vulkan evolves to meet the industry needs. There's a whole bunch of other wordings I could give but essentially there have been some um, benchmarks which have been released with the Talus Principle and it's fair to say that the Talus Principle's initial implementation has not been quite what we'd expected. In fact, a lot of the time, yes it's fa faster than OpenGL, but I'm pretty sure at this point you could just super glue the graphics card into your PC and supply it no power in it, probably faster than OpenGL. Okay, maybe that was a bit mean, but seriously. But it's still not quite where DirectX 11 is. However, I'm not surprised. I mean, DirectX 11, A, it's been essentially around for some time, and B, the Talos principle is not fully coded yet. I don't know all of the ins and outs of this, so I don't want to give this as factoid, but, factoid, but, um, from what my initial research has been, essentially, the implementation of Vulkan is really bare bones on um, the Talos principle and therefore it's not indicative of what they're going to get once the final implementation is done. It's essentially a wrapper at the moment. A lot of the actual multi-thread implementation has not been finished and a lot of the actual real code work has not been done. But yeah. I think regular viewers will probably know my opinions on Vulkan. Um, I prefer it to DirectX 12 because in my opinion it's good for an industry to not have, or one player in the industry to not have full control over a specific and critical thing such as an API. You know, like an API, it's not a small thing. It's massive. It's essentially you are at a company's mercy because your tools have been created with it your programmers know it your game designers know how it works the actual you know even things such as the the game engines that you may be working with the third party tools physics engines all of the stuff is coded to in one way or another interact with a piece of software or a piece of you know code or something that relies on an API so I'm not saying that it's not it's impossible to switch to a different API because obviously it's it isn't because they're doing it now but it's an absolute pain in the butt and that's one of the reasons which I personally believe that it's really good for um, a more open standard with that but that's just my opinion anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the first of the videos I'm gonna get going and I'm gonna cry and record the second one so take care of yourselves bye for now